Welcome back to the new show. It's new show. It's new show. Why is it called new show? Nobody knows. It's new show. We have a fun one for you today. This is part of our Winter is Coming Classic. For year two of the Winter is Coming Classic, you are going to have to complete three workouts, which is four scores in this online competition that runs from December 16th until December 19th. We're gonna do something a little bit different with this year's workout releases. The first two scores, which is the first workout, we're gonna release on November 10th, well in advance so you have time to practice. The second workout, we're gonna give you a little hint, which is gonna be right now, that you are doing rowies, <laughs> rowing? rowing and burpees in that workout. But the format will be released on December 15th with the movement standards and the exact description of what you're doing. And then the final workout is a full surprise. That will come out on Thursday, December 16th, as our throwdown workout at 1 p.m. on YouTube, and that will kick off the leaderboard going live. This is workouts number one and two. Workout one, on a six minute clock, you will build to a max complex of five snatch deadlifts, plus four hang squat snatch, plus three overhead squats. This must be unbroken. You can re-grip in the hip for the squat snatch, but you cannot put the bar on the ground for any of the re-grips. At the six minute mark, you will start a five minute AMRAP of max wall walks. This is going to be a fun one, and we have Allison demoing. Let's go watch it. Yeah. Oh, sorry, I wasn't ready. You go, you go do your thing again. Nope. Oh, and we're back. Sorry, I wasn't ready for the camera, but Chris puts it in your face all the time. We're about to start workout one and two for Winners Coming Classic, and we have a great demo. Allison's going to demo this for us. I'm going to start the clock, and we're going to get rocking and rolling. Are you ready to go? Let's do it. Ten seconds. So again, this is workout one and two for the Winner is Coming Classic. It is a build to a max complex of five snatch deadlifts, four hang squat snatches, and three overhead squats. Allison's goal here is to start right away and then rest as needed and just do two total attempts. Her positions look really good so far. Awesome first lift there. To me, I think this is the hardest part is doing all of these unbroken. It's just really hard for me to reset in my hip. She's doing a good job of getting it back to her hip. Some people try to just do almost like a, you know, whatever you want to call it, a bop bop without having to reset like that. But man, this is more grip intensive than you would think. Awesome. So she got the hard part done. Now it's three overhead squats. If you're doing this workout, make sure you're getting your hip crease below your knee. She's doing a really good job. The other thing you have to think about here is overhead positioning, getting overly fatigued. So. That was 145, Allison, that was 145 Allison, 145, correct. So that was 145, her max snatch is 195 pounds. So I'm a human calculator, that would be 74.9% of her 1RM. I actually just did that on my phone. She's going up to 155. All right, she's gonna go to 155, which will be right under 80%, like 79.8% or something like that. That's actually, I think, pretty high for most athletes. You gotta keep in mind, if you're a male that's super powerful, your percentage on this is actually probably gonna be a little bit lighter. Some females, even if they're powerful, will be able to be a little bit higher. That's just kind of the typical trend. That may, you may kind of break that mold. For me, I wasn't as powerful as, let's say, somebody like Mike or Max or even Kyle Ruth. So I could do a complex like this at 85 or 90%, whereas maybe they're at 80%. But the weights would stay the same because even though I'm hitting a higher percentage, I'm just not as strong. That's the tendency with CrossFitters. So keep that in mind. But before you start the complex, warm up with some lighter loads and then kind of come up with a game plan. Okay, I'm going to start at the zero and I'm going to do one complex at 70%. And then at the two minutes, I'm going to do 75%. And then at the four minutes or five minutes, I'm going to do 80%, whatever it may be. For Allison, she just said, hey, look, I want two attempts, but I have a feeling that she's going to do a third attempt because she still has four minutes here. Keep in mind, it's six total minutes to do uh, as many complexes as you'd like. But the shoulder position, the shoulder fatigue that you're gonna get, plus the grip fatigue that you'll get from this is much higher than you think, especially bringing the bar down from overhead into the next hang. Uh, so you gotta keep that in mind. 
A couple things. When you're setting this up, I would do what Allison's doing right now and have a resting posture. So she's, I don't know if she intentionally set up those mats or not, but no, she did it. That's something that I have done in the past. If you guys remember um, workout, I think it was open workout 17.3, that was the snatches and the chest of bars. I knew when I got to the 265 pound bar in that workout, which was the last barbell, that I, I was gonna have to take time between the singles. So I did one at 265, and then I rested on a box for, I mean, it was like a minute and a half, and I attempted my next attempt, which I missed like three times and never got that. But it makes sense if you're do, building to a max or the workout slows down dramatically like this, have a resting posture, whether that's on the ground or that's sitting on a box or for her, the, the pads over there, have kind of a plan in place so that you can recover as quickly as possible and then do another attempt. She's stretching out the wrist. Let's see what happens here. What, Adam, what, what was the advice that you just gave Allison? Um, I asked her how much her grip fatigue during that complex. It's 45 seconds of time under tension, so it's a lot of time to have that bar in her hands. And I told her that even if she doesn't feel like she's slipping, maybe it makes sense to kind of like re-grip in her hip like that at the bottom, if nothing else, just to get a little bit more blood flow inside of her forearms. So well, That was one of the things that I said is it's really hard for me to come down on a yeah. snatch because I miss my hip and then I, right. I lose the right. bar. So And the bar might slip out of your hands a little bit. So I think taking the time there at your hip to almost readjust your grip and give your grip just a little bit of a second to uh, refresh makes sense. Yeah. All right, so here is attempt number two. She finished that first one at like 45 seconds, like Adam said. Uh, so let's just basically call it a you know three minute ish break between those. The deadlift's going to be the easiest part, but if you're in a snatch grip for the deadlift, it it is grip intensive. It's hard to hold that position for anybody that's done a snatch grip Good. deadlift. Good. First one looked even better than the first one of the last set. All right, re grip. I think it makes sense, like Adam said. Nice. Good Another life. really good one. So two more reps here. I, again, think these last two are definitely the hardest, especially in the grip and the overhead position. Just staying stable overhead is really challenging. Take your time, get tall. If she can get this last one, she's definitely going to be able to get the overhead squats. And I think that's true for most people, so keep that in mind if you're doing this. Good. All right, three overhead squats to finish. Good. One. Two, awesome. You can see a little bit of shoulder fatigue, but she's definitely gonna be able to hang on for this. Nice. Three, awesome, awesome. So finish that at 455. I have to imagine she's now not going to do, I know I said that she may do a third attempt, but that, I mean, that's a 45 second complex. So keep that in mind when you're doing this, it's tough. Their shoulders are probably a little fatigued going into the wall walk. So having a minute rest before you do the wall walks makes a lot of sense. If you're planning this and you want three attempts, then you're gonna have to reduce the rest break between your attempt one and your attempt two so that you have a little bit of a rest break before the wall walks. Because you have to keep in mind the wall walks will start at the six minute mark. So she has now 30 seconds rest. If you're finishing your complex at like 5.55 and you only have five seconds, you're already in a hole going into your wall walk. So just make sure that you have a plan in place that gives you, I would say at least 30 seconds, but I think Allison did that right, where she's done by the five minute mark, she can rest up and then get rocking and rolling on these. And the other thing you'll notice, Real quick before she starts is she changed her shoes so she's not wearing the lifters doing these. I think that makes sense too, unless you can get some kind of slippery thing on your toe to slide down the wall with your lifters. All right, three, two, one, and go. This is part two or really workout two of the Winter is Coming Classic. You go right into a five minute AMRAP of wall walks. We are using the open standard. So it, you line up against the wall, your feet are against the wall, and then wherever your shoulder line is, that's where your hands must meet. On the way up, you make sure that you get fully extended. Your knees can't be bent on the wall. Your hands have to touch that 10 inch mark, that blue line, if you can see, it kind of blends in with the blue mat. But that's where her hands have to touch. And then she has to get her hands all the way back to that starting line before her feet hit. Now, right now, she doesn't have a judge. We'll try to kind of keep an eye on her. If you're doing this and you're going to submit a video for any of the prizes, make sure you have someone that's calling out your reps. If you get a no rep, make sure they tell you because we will review those videos to make sure those are legitimate when you're doing the workout. Five minutes of wall walks. This is a very challenging workout to figure out how to pace. I am a huge fan of doing cluster sets. And what that means is like, I'll do three really fast, then take a longer break, three really fast, take a longer break. I just feel like for me mentally, that allows me to kind of have these micro goals and keep pushing myself to kind of, okay, I know that the next, just the next goal, the next mark is three reps and then six reps and then nine reps, so on and so forth. But with something like this, once your shoulders go, it's really hard to even do sets of three or four or five or whatever you choose. So 
kind of tailor this towards your skill level, just like anything else you do in the sport. Um, but having those micro goals, I think, helps quite a bit. And then if you have to, just go to singles as needed. Let's get some feedback here. Do you, Adam, do you know what the goal was on this? When we were talking last night, we were thinking somewhere around 30 to 35 would be a good goal. So that is somewhere between six and seven per minute. Um, she came out in the first minute, and she got right at six, right at a minute. So I think the shoulder fatigue from the complex before was maybe even a little bit more intense than she was planning on. But she's still pretty close to pace. It's basically a rep every 10 to 12 seconds right now. Yeah, she's definitely – I think people are going to think that they can get 50 or 60 reps in five minutes. Like, oh, that's my pace in, you know, if I just do them fresh. But the snatch is going to play a role. And just in general, when you go out too hot with something that is shoulder intensive, if you blow up, you are absolutely screwed. Uh, what – how did she do on 21.1? Like, were her wall walks proficient, or is that something that she's been working on? Um, Allison on her hands is definitely a, it's still a priority in terms of the training. Handstand walks, wall walks, handstand push-ups. So this is something that I feel like it is one of those things where if you get scared or you start to get close to that cliff, you're going to back off a little bit more, especially if you have it as a perceived weakness. So it's a training priority for her. I feel like she is managing the fatigue pretty well right now. Um, <laughs> it's just there's nowhere to hide in five minutes of wall walks. It's a helpless feeling when it goes. <laughs> it's it's the exact same thing with handstand push-ups in a workout, especially when they're strict and you just like you get to you feel good and then all of a sudden you hit that wall and you can't do anymore. Um, that was good insight by Adam. So again, this is workout one and two for the Winners Coming Classic. After this, workout three will be released. This when we film this video is a week before, but when this video comes out, the following day we will release workout three, and then on Thursday of this. This week, we will release workout number four, which will be our throwdown workout. There's some fun workouts. We kind of changed up the tests a little bit, but we still wanted to have different biases. So each of the tests has its own bias in it. And that's essentially what happens in any qualifier or if you go to the games, there are biases. The, the long kayak versus maybe a short and powerful workout later on. So that's the way we were thinking about these. Um, obviously, for those that are in TDT Compete, they were prepping for some of this. We didn't do any specific wall walk prep. It was just mixed into our normal training. But we did some complex prep because I think it's important to kind of get a feel for what that complex, especially with a snatch overhead, is going to feel like with the shoulder fatigue and the grip fatigue. Um, but this is something now that we saw. We saw a, comp a clean complex complex in the open and I think that this year we could see a snatch complex that would be a great progression for CrossFit and you kind of can't put anything past them they are always trying to test the boundaries or push the boundaries to see where everyone is at uh, so practicing different complex variations not just your one RMs makes a lot of sense with where the sport is trending especially with the bias towards all the strength work so Allison looked over at the clock a couple seconds ago. She knows exactly where she's at. As Adam said, her goal is 35 total reps. She has 35 seconds now. I don't know what her actual rep count is right now, but she's definitely significantly sped up the pace to get as many reps as possible in the last few seconds. And that's something that I think everyone can do. If you're just completely blown up, you're not going to be able to speed up your wall walks at the end. But if you have a little juice, just pick up the pace and go as fast as you can until you get to that point with, let's call it, 30 to 45 seconds left because the elite males and females are getting about five or one rep every five seconds. And if you can get close to that with 45 seconds left, you can definitely make up some time. And we are at the 11 minute mark. We'll let her rest for a second and then we'll go over and talk to her. I'm going to give her, let's call it 15 seconds. So let's see how fast that she can recover before we ask her some fun questions. I'm going to make you talk to me while you're breathing very hard. How many reps did you get? I wasn't counting. I don't know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Watch the video. 28. I think. Okay. W once you got to the wall, did you, or after the snatches, did you feel anything in your shoulders? A lot more fatigue than I expected. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was telling just everyone that's watching the video, I think that that's going to be much more challenging on your shoulders and probably your grip than you think. The grip doesn't matter as much here, but the, the shoulders definitely do, right? Yeah. Just like that stacked position is already tired. And so when you, when you went into this, Adam said the goal was 35, right? Like 10 or one rep every 10 seconds or so. Yeah. Did you, were you paying attention to the clock at all? Or were you just kind of saying, okay, I'm going to do one at a time and figure it out? Um, I had an idea of where the clock, where I was. So like, I knew that like the first minute I was like six. So I knew my pace was a little slower, but I also knew that it had to be. Yeah. And then you definitely picked up your pace the last 35 seconds. I saw you look at the clock. I'm assuming that you knew that, hey, there's 35 seconds left. I'm going to pick up the pace. What were you feeling then? Uh, at that point, I was just doing whatever I could. So I didn't care so much about how many steps I was taking or like the rhythm. And I just 
tried to move. That is exactly the point that I was hoping she'd make. At the end of a workout, obviously you want to be as efficient as possible, but really at that point it comes down to how many reps can I get to get the best possible score. So the steps or just how you feel, if you blow up, it's okay. There's only 35 seconds left. I think most people are going to get to where she was, where it's just like, I just got to figure it out the last 30 seconds. So find a way to get as many reps as you can. Any other feedback for the snatch? It's really grippy. <laughs> <laughs> I think the way that she reset makes a lot of sense. Some people can kind of do like the bop bop in the hip and if you can and hold on to it, that's awesome. But most people are going to have to regrip. So what Allison did makes a lot of sense. Great job. And we'll see you again soon. It's new show. It's new show. Why is it called new show? Nobody knows it's new show.